We've often heard many quotations that go, you are what you eat, you are what you think. But today I would like to remind you that you are what you speak. You and I are exactly what we speak. If you say that you can do something, or you can't do something, do you know that you are right? If I say that I can or I can't, I cannot, I am right. If I say that I can do something, I am right. And if I say that I can't do something, I am also right. You see, the power of these words, sending instructions to our own intelligence, it is so powerful that we comply with our own thoughts and our own words. The power of our words are so strong, and this is why we, we should be very careful when we speak to our children what type of words that we use. I remember, and I would have shared this with you many years ago, as a little boy growing up, I was part of an extended family, Nani and Aji and Aja and Mausi and... Everybody was part of one big family. There was never a separation in terms of what we call nuclear family. And one of the bad habits, today I will say it as a bad habit, because back then it was, we never we didn't know any better. One of the bad habits of the family was to give everybody a little nickname. Hmm? And my nickname was what? Those of you could remember? My nickname was Kushuhel. Hmm? It was my grandfather's way of saying Kashuhel. Yeah? And he made fun of me as a little boy, and was out of love and playing with me. They, my nickname, when, especially when they wanted to, to make me feel a little bad, is to call me, hey Kushunesh, come here. And I grew up with, a, it was a complex in my mind, in that whenever someone used the word Kashu, I, subconsciously, it brought me back to the time when I was a little boy growing up, when I was ridiculed or made to feel uncomfortable by being called Kashuhel or Kushuhel. You see, sometimes out of love, sometimes out of not meaning anything or having wrong intentions, we can use words in communicating to and with our children that can have a long-term, a deep-seated impression in their life. And when our children don't get things right, we should never tell them you're silly or you're foolish or you're stubborn or use these negative words because these words, our children, sometimes to our own self, we would create what is known as vasanas, deep-seated impressions in their minds that they will live to make your words come true or make their own words come true. If you think you can or you can't, we're told that you are right. And I'd like to share with you some very common examples that we use in our conversations. Today is about paying attention to the power of our words and where we are falling short to change the choice of vocabulary in our lives. Have you ever heard people talk about your health and say, I really don't want to get sick? Have you ever heard people saying that I don't want to get sick? Whenever we say I don't want to get sick, the consciousness of this universe responds to getting sick, get sick. The universe hears, I want to get sick. Because we are using the words, I don't want to get sick. We're talking to ourselves in the negative. Have you ever heard people in the job situation that says, I'm really not sure if I will get a promotion, you know. I really don't think I will get this promotion, you know. Or, I really hope that my boss doesn't view me as negative. You see, the intention is that you want a positive outcome, but the choice of words that we're using is negative. Or when we talk about our relationships, we talk about, we use words like, I really don't want an unhealthy relationship. I really don't want, and we talk about what we don't want, but in dealing with our relationships, when dealing with our job situations, or in dealing with our health issues, or as a matter of fact, anything, in speaking to yourself or speaking to other people, speak in the affirmative. There's a nice play of words. Assuming that we were all walking down 
going for a hike on Maracas Hills. And I know that there is a steep cliff that we are approaching in the next 20 feet. And I want to say to you, people, people, be careful. Don't watch, don't walk where you're not watching. Confused, right? Don't watch where you're not, don't walk where you're not watching. What does that mean to you? Don't walk where you're not watching. What does that mean? See, you're thinking. It means, watch where you're walking. The point I'm making is, we have choices in terms of how we communicate any idea. And especially when it comes to ourselves or dealing with people in our lives, we should pay attention to the negative words that we use in those conversations because it will have exactly that. Even though our intentions may be to say something positive or to wish for something positive, the mere use of negative words will create exactly that for ourselves. So instead of saying, I don't want to get sick, say, I want to be healthy or I am healthy. Instead of saying, I, I am not sure, I think my boss may feel have negative things to say about me, say it otherwise. My boss will only have positive things about me. Or he will say things that will help me. Notice, we're not afraid of criticism, but we will say, I know that when he speaks to me, if there is anything, it will help me. In talking about relationships, talk about your relationships in the way you want your relationship to be. Well, yes, last week we had an engagement, and one of the blessings to the couple, it is to create a relationship that they want for themselves, but not talk about what they don't want. You see, the power of words in our life will be an instruction to the outcome that we will manifest. Have you ever heard about the concept of trying, giving up trying? What is the meaning of the word try? Can anybody tell me what is the meaning of the word try? Attempt. Endeavor. Very good. But many times, in the application of the word try, let's talk about past tense. If somebody says, boy, I, I tried to go up that mountain, you know, I tried to, to hike that mountain, what that meant? What do you interpret by saying, I tried to hike up that mountain, Mount Hololo in North Coast? It means, I didn't get through, right? I tried it. It insinuates that the attempt failed. If somebody said, but I really tried in that relationship, you know, what are they saying? What are they not saying? What they're not saying is that there was, it turned out to be difficult, problematic. It was a broken relationship. If somebody said to you, boy, I, will, I really tried coming to temple every Sunday morning, you know, what that meant? Hmm? It meant that there were other things that would have gotten in the way that the person is insinuating, I fail to come to temple every Sunday. You see the word try in past tense suggests that there was failure in the attempt. And one of the words that I, I encourage you to get out of your life, it is the word try. Sachin, what is the Nike advertisement? Just uh, anybody, what is the, the Nike just, uh, advertisement? Nike says, just do it. Don't try. Just do it. And in our life, when you're talking about things that you want for yourself, dispel and discard this word that is called try. Don't try to do anything. You see, everything starts with a thought and with a, with a good intention. But if you introduce the word try, try translates to we are already making room, we are accommodating a possibility of failure. When Hanumanji left from the southern tip of India to Lanka, he didn't say to Rama, my Lord, I will try, I will definitely try to go to Lanka. He said, Lord, I will spring across this salt abyss and reach to Lanka. I will. I will not try. I will.